Welcome, courageous souls, to a special edition of Storytime with Veronica. Today, I extend an invitation to journey alongside me through the labyrinth of fear and the beacon of resilience. I am Veronica, and in this chapter, I'll candidly unravel my odyssey grappling with PTSD triggered by harrowing encounters with violent dogs. Fair warning, the canvas I paint may be unsettling. For those who find solace in lighter fare, I encourage you to explore my whimsical adventures in ballroom or immerse yourself in my rendition of Alice in Wonderland. But for those who remain, let us embark together into the heart of storytelling, where even the shadows hold fragments of our shared illumination. Now I admit this story is hard to tell, as even to this day, its effects leave me shaking. Honestly, this could possibly be part of the reason I have such horrible anxiety as an adult. This happened many years ago when I was 12 years old. I was inside watching an anime on the computer, so thankfully I did not see it happen just the after credits, which were just as harrowing. Now let me start by setting the scene. My grandparents had a mini poodle named Sparky that they have had since Sparky was a baby. At the time of the incident, Sparky was an older dog. He wasn't the youngest baby in the world, but he wasn't the oldest. I would say, if he were a human, he probably would have been about 40 to 50. My parents, though, just got a mini pin named Drago. Drago, my baby, was a few years old at this time, so still relatively young. On that horrible day, my mom, my dad, my grandma, grandpa, and my mom's dog, Drago, and grandparents' dog, Sparky, were all outside. Drago was out back closer to where I was sitting, and Sparky was out front, where my grandparents and parents were sitting. I was watching my anime Dead to the World as most young preteens tends to be. When I heard my mom's frantic call for me to bring Drago inside now, I was confused, but didn't think much of it at the time. It was only after I brought Drago inside that I learned the truth. About five to 10 minutes after Drago was back in the safety of the home, Grandpa came inside carrying Sparky barely breathing and covered in blood. I was horrified. Sparky looked dead. There was so much blood. I learned later that our neighbor's dog got out and attacked Sparky and bit my grandma when she tried to separate them. Grandpa rushed Sparky to the vet, but unfortunately there was nothing they could do. Sparky was dying a slow death, so the kindest thing my grandpa could do at that point was to put Sparky down so he wouldn't have to suffer an agonizing death. I don't know what happened to our neighbor's dog. The contract on the house we were renting ended shortly after. Nor did I really care what happened to our neighbor's dog. Honestly, I was too busy dealing with the trauma of Sparky's death. I may not have seen it happen, but the sight of Sparky covered in blood like that haunts me even to this day. Honestly as it is, I can no longer tolerate the sound of dogs fighting even if they are, play fighting, it sends me into a panic. When walking Drago after that, any time we would walk past another dog, I would pick Drago up and carry him. Dog parks were a living hell for me as my heart would literally freeze at the sight of another dog so much as looking Drago's way. Honestly, Drago became an unofficial emotional support puppy for me with how close we became. After what happened to Sparky, I made Drago a promise that I would always protect him. I like to believe that he understood me too because when my mom took him to a dog park years later, he would run to me and hide behind my legs or crawl into my arms when he was scared of the other dogs. I became his shield and him the glue to my shattered heart. Grandpa did eventually get another dog, Sierra, another poodle. He actually wasn't planning on adopting another baby, but when he saw her, he said he knew she belonged with him. Poor baby was terrified of the sound of a water bottle crinkling. Don't know why, I have my guesses though. She wasn't a puppy when he got her, she was older, but they just clicked upon meeting. I have to admit though, I was weary of her around Drago for a while, terrified of a Sparky incident. Yes, I realize it was a neighbor's dog that killed Sparky, but it tell that to my irrational fear. That being said, I did calm down around her, after I realized her and Drago became best friends. Eventually though, time went by and we ended up having to put Drago down as he became too sick to really cope. 
He had severe diabetes and was always in pain. We tried insulin from the vet for him and it worked for a little bit, but eventually it stopped working and Drago would just spend the night crying. It got to the point I couldn't even touch him without it hurting him so bad. He was sleeping all day, every day, barely eating and just looking miserable. So unfortunately we had to let him go. My parents now have two female Boston Terriers and let me tell you they are complete opposites of their male counterparts, Drago and Sparky. They are spitfires. Misty loves her balls and playing keep away. She demands attention and will lick your face in revenge if she thinks you aren't paying her enough attention. Phoenix, on the other hand, is my lazy little ball of fluff. She is a little lady and will give you the most betrayed look ever if you dare to fart while she is laying on your lap. Even if she is the one who farted, she will give a dignified sniff a betrayed look before huffing as she prances away. I still have my moments where fear grips my heart, and I feel I need to wrap Misty Phoenix and Sierra in bubble wrap, but it's gotten better. But it's definitely a day that will haunt me until the day I die. Thankfully, though, I am never truly alone. With the Lord by my side, each day seems brighter and brighter. Until next time on Storytime with Veronica.